Forgiving others is a key concept in conflict resolution to help promote healthy relationships. It plays an important role in religions and it's even taught in schools. However, forgiving others is not the key component to setting yourself free from pain and suffering. My name is Michelle Lee and I help people transform their lives through inner healing and overcoming limiting beliefs and unhealthy patterns of behavior. While forgiving others may not be the ultimate key to freeing yourself, it is important. So let's talk about what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is a letting go of any pain, anger, bitterness, and resentment that you might harbor towards others when they have hurt you or performed any acts of aggression towards you. Forgiveness is accepting the fact that the situation that happened could not have happened any differently than it did. Forgiveness is not for the person who harmed you or performed that act that caused you pain. Forgiveness is for you. It is a letting go of any hurt, pain, resentment, anger, or bitterness that you may still be holding on to because of what happened. Forgiveness is an internal process. You don't even need to involve the other person in the process if you don't feel that that would be beneficial. Most times it's not. Because if you attempt to involve the other person and they don't provide the apology that you're looking for, then you're going to feel even worse about the situation. It's all about you letting go of those negative, unpleasant feelings that are continuing to poison you and moving on. You may need to sell, set healthier boundaries with someone, but they don't have to be involved in the process. So I know this is something that a lot of people struggle with because having been a therapist for over 20 years, I heard a lot of people say, well, they don't deserve my forgiveness. Well, it's not about them deserving your forgiveness. It's about you deserving to be freed from that poison that you're continuing to hold on to. They're no longer doing that act of aggression to you. That situation is no longer happening, but you are continuing to relive that over and over again and cause that pain upon yourself. So a lot of us can get to that point of realizing that we need to let go of that. So we can end up getting to the point where we do find a way to have that forgiveness of others. And once you realize that people are operating, we are all operating out of our current level of conscious awareness. So even though we might have an intellectual component that tells us this act that I'm doing is not helpful. It might be harmful to another person. There is some underlying limiting belief or unconscious pattern that continues to play out even when we don't want it to. So once we realize that's happening, we can tend to have that forgiveness in others. What is more difficult to overcome and is more important to setting you free from that pain and suffering is self forgiveness understanding and believing that we also were only operating out of our current level of conscious awareness. When our conscious level of awareness is on the lower part of that scale and we're in guilt and shame and anger, then we are also operating out of ego. When we are operating out of ego, that is based on those limiting beliefs of lack and scarcity attachment and the belief that we are in control. We identify with these beliefs so deeply that we continue to hold on to things, situations, jobs, and people that keep us in pain and suffering. If you would like to learn more about limiting beliefs, check out my video. When we start to understand that people are only operating out of their current level of conscious awareness and we have that acceptance that things could not have happened any differently than they did then we start to have compassion and we can lean into forgiveness it seems that most people find it easier to have that forgiveness in others and the acts that they have done but we continue to hold on to those beliefs that somehow 
we should have known better. We weren't strong enough. We weren't smart enough. We should have seen that coming. We should be punished for having done harm to others. And it's these limiting beliefs that keep us in that role of suffering. Look back at some of the decisions you've made. Does it come with an attachment to blame, guilt, or shame? Then it's time for you to forgive that version of yourself that made those decisions. I carried an enormous amount of blame, guilt, and shame when I decided to end my marriage and had to then have shared custody of my children. I blamed my ex for not being able to love me the way that I needed to be loved. All of this was rooted in my unconscious awareness, in my limiting beliefs that I was not enough, that I was unimportant, and that continual search for external sources to know my worth and to feel love. But even after I became aware of all of this and was able to forgive my ex for his role in the breakdown of our relationship, I still carried that guilt and shame for being the person that I never thought I would become. I had understanding and compassion for how he acted and reacted to things, but I could not bring myself to have that same understanding and compassion towards my behavior and what I was responsible for in the breakdown of the relationship. I also really struggled with not being there every day for my kids. They were very little when we separated. And so I kept myself trapped in that pain, believing that somehow if I stayed in that pain, it would take away any of their pain. But life doesn't work that way. I had to find forgiveness for that version of myself who made those decisions. I was able to find that through meditation. If you've listened to any of my other videos, this was the main component that allowed me to heal through my spiritual awakening, which I'm still continuing to go through. Meditation allowed me to be still and to go in and view that younger version of myself in that particular situation, understand why I made those decisions, which was based on beliefs that had started from my early childhood, and have compassion for that 36 or 37 year old who made those choices. I was able to show her love and grace and comfort her the way that she needed it. And that's what set me free from my pain and the prison that I kept myself in through suffering. Since then, I've been able to go through layer by layer and release that guilt and shame that was attached to everything, all of those younger unaware, unawakened versions of me and holding that self-forgiveness just opened up this path to self-love, like the floodgates were open and I was able to feel full of love from the inside, not seeking that from external sources. Prior to that, I had always been drawing from an empty well, trying to give all of the love that everybody else needed while leaving my well and the love for myself bone dry. I was trying to provide that love for others, but it was based in fear, fear that if I didn't give enough of myself that they would all abandon me. Once I was able to give myself that love, know that I was worthy of it just by being human, 
then I could be filled and provide that pure love to others and learn how to receive it in return. And what's even crazier was that once I was able to feel that love within myself, all of my relationships started to change. Even the relationships that I thought would never recover be anything more than tolerating each other. It's important to remember that we are all just doing our best with what we have and whatever level of conscious awareness we are currently operating from. This allows us to have compassion and accept what is so that we can have forgiveness not only of others, but more importantly of ourselves. So even if whatever happened wasn't good enough, we are still worthy of love and compassion and acceptance and forgiveness. This is what truly sets us free. Be sure to seek that forgiveness for yourself as you're on your journey and path of spiritual awakening. It's so worth it. Drop me a comment and let me know what you're working on forgiving for yourself. Like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Peace and love.